So you see that thumbnail you saw isn't a clickbait. It happened to me first and and I thought to tell you about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for tuning in. If you are new here, hello. My name is Uluwa Timulayi, but you can call me Timmy and you are absolutely welcome to my corner. Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave and join the family, okay? It's all good vibes here. Trust me, you'd enjoy it, right? So yeah, if you are a returning subscriber, I do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I think I mentioned that earlier, but I mean, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Share with your friends. Share with everyone you think might need this. Share on your WhatsApp status. Share on your Insta story. Share with every single person. Trust me, you might be saving someone from making that decision. Or you might even be helping them make better decisions, if you know what I mean. So share away <laughs> i know the reason you're here is to yeah just but i mean trust me this is not just a story time i honestly just feel like i need to like get it off my chest and you know speak about it because i realized that people don't actually talk about these things and it happens okay now to the reason why you are here let's get to it so okay. disclaimer guys of course like i have to do a disclaimer um this is not in any way discouraging you from you know doing a doing care job I feel like i even know people who came all the way from their countries to be carers in the uk i know international students like that are doing that like that's their that's their source of income that's what they do right however i honestly just felt like if someone if i if i had someone to you know tell me the in-depth of what the job entails of what you have to do things you have to see i probably won't feel the way i felt when the incident happened okay i feel like people don't really talk about it people just say oh um being a carer is a very rewarding job um i mean you get to like they pay you good money to an extent it's not as good as some other jobs but i mean you earn well i mean that's like some people's source of income their source of livelihood so yeah so i'm not in any way discouraging you to you know do care jobs or anything the reason i'm making this video is for you to be well informed before you take that care job or before you say oh i got a job and i'm willing to give you my all i'm willing to do it okay yeah so when i came in um september i mean i started searching for jobs i applied for jobs on indeed flex like i, I already made a video about how the old indeed flex um job hunt went and after my first second shift i realized that um, indeed flex didn't have a lot of shifts like that there are a lot of us like on the app and so like before one shift drops somebody has already picked it leaving those of us that like maybe sometimes see later to not have any shifts to pick here but like i'm not we're not talking about indeed flex yet today yeah so i mean when i realized that i'm like okay you know what i need to like look for other sources like let's see let me try let me try care out okay am i i honestly but let's say i didn't have plans to do care jobs i did because i knew that care jobs are the kind of jobs that you you would easily get in the uk care job is that job that like that, that is everywhere no matter the city you go to you definitely get a care job okay care and support so i was like okay okay yeah and i think i'm going to give care and support a shot a friend of mine also doubles as my flatmate um like started introducing to me a lot of care homes a lot of care agencies and then i mean she gave me their contact and says oh apply apply and i, I just kept applying applied to as many care homes care agencies as i could and i got a call back i was very happy they called me back to say oh when i need um do you need the job right away all these like normal um, recruitment process come for an interview come for a training and all that and all that and i was like oh yeah cool everything is fine i go for the training i go for induction so after the induction um you are we're also meant to do like extra trainings right extra online trainings even after the induction before you like before we are allowed to start the job so i mean i did all that and then of course it was time to start my job and I started, and then I think on the last day of the 
training that be induction i can't remember which of which of it was that was when i found out that it's going to be like a home to home kind of care providing service i don't know if you guys understand what i'm trying to say but basically what we're meant to do is to go from one client's house to another um giving them like all the care they need all the support they need in their own home so i mean i was like okay yeah i'll just do this and then keep looking for other jobs i started the job and it was really stressful because you're meant to leave your house at a particular time then move from a client's house to another rendering care service yeah so i mean I started doing it and it was very stressful. I leave my house at like seven o'clock, sometimes before seven, because I mean, I have to be at the client's house by seven o'clock. So I mean, I guess sometimes I get to the client's house by seven o'clock, do whatever it is I can do, um, go to another client's house. When I'm done, go back to the first client's house. It was just a lot of back and forth. Okay, it was a lot of back and forth and I mean, I was managing it and I was also like searching for other jobs because I mean, it was really stressful. I can't even lie, especially because I don't have a car. If you have a car, that, that kind of job might be easy for you. It's called domiciliary care, by the way. So yeah, um, I didn't have a car. So it was very difficult to, you know, move from one place to another. The only days I found the job easy was when like some of my colleagues that have cars picked me up from my house and then like we have we run the calls together basically a month later my pay slip comes and i'm seeing that the mat is not matting like it was it just wasn't like it wasn't adding up i worked for a whole month and i think i got paid about four i got what, what, what was my pay slip was about 400 and something pounds right and what they told me was oh the reason it's like that is because um uh, we don't pay you for the time in between i don't know if you get for your travel time you only get paid for the number of minutes you spend with the clients i was like what <laughs> bear in mind i mean i still have like um, I have rent to pay obviously like I have a lot of bills on my neck and I was just so angry and I was so frustrated because I was like I worked with you people for a whole month and I'm getting paid this amount it just didn't make any sense to me and so I resigned I mean I I was done <laughs> I was like it makes sense to just like stay at home and focus on my school work rather than stressing myself moving from one place to another walking from morning to night and at the end of the day, be getting paid something that is not worth it. Bearing in mind that I only have to work for, I, I can only work for 20 hours. Okay. So, I mean, because of that, I resigned and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to look, keep searching for other jobs. I started looking for care homes, proper, proper care homes where you walk from, um, a particular hour to a particular hours like sometimes 10 hours sometimes 12 hours depending on the number of hours your agency or your company is willing to give you okay so i mean i started searching for those type of jobs because i mean that makes more sense at the end of the day when i get paid i know what i'm getting paid for i worked for this number of hours so i'm going to get paid for this number of hours i got a company a care home on indeed and i applied right and then when i applied i got called for an interview went for the interview that was also like really small it was a very seamless process because again care jobs are very easy to get like i said care jobs are very easy to get so i mean the process was seamless and i started working with them i started working with them it wasn't that bad to be honest like everyone there was very like they were very friendly a majority of those i worked and I'm still working with because I still work in care. That's why I'm saying this is not to discourage anybody, okay? I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just letting you know the things that you might face working in care, okay? People at this my new place of work, they're very friendly. Like they're, they're, they're very, they are very open to, you know, teaching me things to do, how to do it. Just putting me on the right track and making sure that i don't make mistakes right so i mean i started the job everything was going all smooth so the holiday day period i took up extra shifts and i'm like okay like i'm going to whatever it takes i'm going to give it i'm going to be giving it to this job because i need a lot of money by the time this holiday is over so i mean i have enough money to myself so i can pay all the bills on my neck like literally pressing my neck 
so um there was a particular night like i said i only do night shifts at this my care company so uh at this let me not say care company care home okay care home now so i mean i was at work that day and there's this resident of ours who has who had because i mean he passed who had cancer and i mean it was that night was just very unusual he, I don't know how to put it, but it wasn't just the, it wasn't his usual self. But that particular night, we were short of staff in the home. So I had to run. So we have, there are like three floors. So, I mean, I had to walk on two floors as against one because we were short of staff that evening. While we were walking, everybody was doing their thing. We knew that this, uh, one of the residents wasn't feeling too good. He wasn't feeling exactly okay i mean the nurse could tell was later when i was having a conversation with the nurse that i mean he could tell that it wasn't he, he knew that it was about to pass basically so i mean um because he wasn't feeling too good he was very rest restless and he somehow i don't know what happened but um he messed everywhere up like when i mean mess up mess up i mean it was like a lot of bowel movement and it was just everywhere like it was it was a lot i feel like that was it <laughs> i don't want to you know like give you guys too much information but it was just bowel movement that was a lot a lot right so um of course that's like one of the things we do we clean residents up make sure that they are comfortable make sure that they are fine right so i mean when we saw that we cleaned him up and after cleaning him up that was when we I got a call to come to the other floor because the other person on the other floor needed help. So it was, I left my other colleague with the nurse on that floor and then I went to the other floor. About an hour later, the colleague on the floor that I was initially on called the, the other floor that I was on that, oh, and they just wanted to inform us that the person that I literally just cleaned up had passed. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> like, like I feel like obviously they tell you like, oh, b before we start these jobs, jobs in care, they tell you some of this um, because they are old people. Like, some of them are end of life. End of life means that like they are at the, at the verge of like dying because I mean they are either very old or they have one um, ailment or the other. Like, it could be any reason, but I mean, they'll let you know that. So these people are like, some of them are end of life. So you cannot get, you cannot get attached to them in any way you get. So, I mean, but like, it's almost impossible for you to not get attached because I mean, these are people that you like see almost every, let me not say almost every day for me that I'm working part time. I don't see them, I don't see them every day, but I mean, whenever I see them, I have conversations with them, speak to them and all that. But not to say that I'm like um how do i say it i was attached to this person but it was just a shock for me honestly i was very shocked because like i was i mean when people say that like this job makes you see life as is that all like just like that like i was literally with this person an hour ago and then i go back downstairs the person is no longer there they've come from the mortuary to like pack his cups it got me thinking like ah, like, um, this life is just very small, like very, very small. And then after that incident, I struggled to complete my shift for the night. <laughs> and I came back to my house, prayed like, God, like this life, I like, I now understand that like this life is very, very small. Like, I don't even know, to be honest, like there's a very thin line between life and death, literally. Like, because like, anyways, that was like what happened on that night and every time i go back to that floor i find it very difficult looking into the room knowing fully well that someone who i i mean took care of for a couple of days right died in there and i mean it honestly was just a lot for me right so um a few weeks later right so on this floor that i'm on quite a number of people on that floor can really not move like they don't really stand up because like they have one ailment or the other like i already said like there are some other floors where the residents there like to an extent they can they are independent okay they can do things for themselves 
<clears throat> take care of themselves all you have to do is like support them monitor them but on this floor a lot of people there cannot do things by themselves you have to literally some of them you have to feed them some of them you have to i mean change their pads all these things are the things that you have to do for them on this floor so there's this other <clears throat> resident who also had cancer she also passed and this one was the most traumatic of them all for me she was always in constant pain she was always like she could, most times she won't be able to sleep at night sometimes when she falls asleep we try not to wake her up just because we don't want her to you know wake up and go back to the pain that she was in before she fell asleep okay so we just like try to manage her and all that but a few days before she passed we realized passed we realized that she she wasn't eating anymore she wasn't i mean she just wasn't okay she wasn't the usual person that we knew and the nurse literally told us that it feels like she'll be passing in a few days time because i mean she wasn't she wasn't the, she was she was already looking pale she wasn't just fine and we knew, i even i knew that she wasn't like the usual person that i've always known right but the part of it that was very somehow for me was that everybody knew that she was going to pass at some point okay we all knew however i was actually like praying in my heart not to be there whenever it was going to happen to be honest because I don't know but i mean i i feel like i'm very soft-hearted and things like this get to me i didn't want to be there i didn't want to be there like whenever it was going to happen whenever it's going to be i just i was just praying that god like whenever this thing is going to be i don't want to be <laughs> i don't want to be on sh um, like i don't i don't want it to be on my shift i don't want to see like i because i know myself i just didn't want to like experience something like that however as god will have it the night she passed, I was on shift and I was literally beside her room. I was, it was during the like early morning pad round. So because I was like trying to not like look into, because I know, I, I knew this person when she had so much energy. I mean, before she now, her health now started deteriorating, right? So, I mean, it was even very difficult for me to go into her room and just see her not like be able to move her body, not be able to do things by herself. Like she, she had gotten worse, basically. So I was just right beside her room. My other colleague was in her room because actually we were meant to like change her at that point before but i mean i couldn't go in honestly so i mean i was just like right at the door waiting for them only for my colleague to come out and say oh um she has passed and i i literally could i <laughs> i was like i was shaking because i was like oh my god like oh my god oh my god oh my god like <laughs> I mean, I was right at the, I was at her entrance, so, and then she was like, oh, like, she, of course, they'll have to call them. I don't know if I was beside the hospital or the mortuary to, you know, come and pack her and, I mean, take her to the mortuary or wherever it is that they'll be taking her to. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. Um, so when do we call? Who, who does the calling and all that? And I was like, oh, before we call, we need to clean her. <laughs> clean who? Yeah, <laughs> can't be me, mom. You can't be me. You're talking to. <laughs> Anyways, she says we need to clean her up because I mean, um, we can't say that to the mortuary like that. She's dirty. By dirty, she means I mean she has poo on her bum or something like that. She's dirty. Of course, we need to clean her up. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And she goes, oh yeah, I understand. Because like, I've never seen a corpse before. You don't get it. Like, I've never seen a corpse. I, I obviously, like, <laughs> the, I feel like the, the, the best in comparison to a corpse that I've seen is in movies where, I mean, they cover their faces, where cover, like, faces of people that have died and all that. But like, a real life corpse, I, I, I've never seen that before. No, I mean, I, I, I was shaking. I was like, oh, no, I can't. I literally told her, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And she goes, oh, yeah, I understand that. Oh, it's your first time. We've never done it before, but we can't send her to the hospital. We can't send her to the mortuary like that. We need to clean her up. 
and I was like, oh, right, let's, let's do it. And we, <laughs> God, <laughs> thinking about it feels very, I don't know, feels very, <sighs> I don't even know how to put it, but I mean, yeah, I had to clean her up. We had to clean her up. Let me not say I, because I wasn't the only one who did it. But I mean, she was used to it. And yeah, I couldn't even look at the body because I was just like, oh, gosh, like, <laughs> I just thought of a lot of things and thought of, you know, making money here. Making money here is not as easy as you all think, honestly. Like, you know when when they say, oh, you have uncles or aunties abroad and you're waiting for them to send you money and all that. I feel like coming here and the past, my past few months here have, has actually taught me to, to not be entitled to anybody's money because... You know, you honestly don't know things they've done, like how much they've suffered, things they've gone through, things they've they've had to see just to make that money. And then when they have their own responsibilities to also cater for, you you don't want to also I don't know how to put it, but the long and short of this part that I'm trying to say is you you shouldn't feel entitled to people's monies actually because Honestly, like they know what they are, they know some people know what they've gone through to make that money that they have, and then of course the the reason they are making money is to pay bills, to do things, to like to do things that are important to them. I mean, in my own case, I have my rent to pay, some my school fees is there, all these things, you know, like <sighs> I mean. It's just, I don't know how to put it, basically, but yeah, I mean, that was it. It happened that night, and I was very, I was very devastated, and then I called my boyfriend to tell him, oh, this is what happened, like, and he, <laughs> he was in shock. Bear in mind that this was the second time it happened, except this time I had to clean the cups, the very first time. So it means that if I was on that floor that night, I probably would have had to, you know, see the cops as well, do something. I don't know, but I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying that that was like the second time it was happening to me in the space of one month, okay? Right. Now, the reason I now decided to make a video about it and, you know, just let you know that, like, care jobs in this UK is not exactly as easy as you think it is until you get here right and you make a decision that you want to do it despite whatever you see regardless of whatever it is you go through regardless of things you have to do basically right so i got back home and i told my friend and my flatmate and she was like oh I, like I, was, I told her from the point of gosh like babe like something really bad happened to me today i don't know how I, how I feel about it i don't know what to think of it if i was in nigeria i probably would have gone to Ryoki because i mean <laughs> i mean you know how very like how we relate things things like that to the spiritual realm a lot in nigeria not like not like i didn't pray about it but i feel like if i was in nigeria my prayer would have been more intense i probably would have gone to the mountain to like go i don't know why but i mean yeah so i mean i told her and she was like oh yeah it has happened to me before casually like and i was like what <laughs> how 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 does something like that happened to you and then you don't mention it you won't even like you didn't even think of telling us that oh you guys should prepare for this it might happen and she was like oh like she just felt like well he's one of those things and like she just kept him moving i would have also kept him moving but i honestly just felt like this is the time that like more people are coming into the uk a lot of people are willing to do care jobs and i just thought you know let you know that before you take that care job First of all, be sure of the kind of care job you are doing. Be sure that it's not, let me not say it's not domiciliary because like, of course, like if you're a student, I don't think domiciliary care would be the exact job you want to do because I mean, you have to walk a lot if you don't have a car. By the time you're getting your pay slip, you're getting paid for the only the number of hours you spend with the clients. And at the end of the day, the amount you are getting is not adding up, if you get what I mean. 
and also if you're working in a care home or you're working with a care agency have it at the back of your mind that these are the things that can happen don't be oblivious of the fact that this thing i just mentioned doesn't happen okay i mean it happens it happened to me twice it happened to my friend once i'm sure a lot of other people that it has happened to but i mean they didn't talk about it because maybe they either didn't have a platform or they just felt like oh it's one of those things i'll be all right but i mean it i didn't feel all right about it and that's why i'm here talking to you about it right okay so know the full package of doing care before you go into it long and short of my story time today right now yeah um so i'm not discouraging anyone not in any way discouraging you if anything care jobs like i said like i would say that they are rewarding in some aspects because i mean you get to cheer these people up you get to make them feel better you get to i mean to an extent you are giving them life not giving them life but i mean you're making their day better one way or the other i honestly feel like nothing prepares you for it so it's better you prepare your mind okay it's better you prepare your mind before you go into it and just know that so these are the things type of things that can happen if you decide to work in care if that makes sense um, about the kind of job i'm still doing i'm still working in a care home the care home of course I'm, i still work there however i'm looking for other jobs because i mean i don't think my mind can take like doing things like that continuously so i started like searching for other jobs but i mean at the moment i still work in care and that's why I'm, i'm saying and i'm saying it again i'm not in any way discouraging you okay so yes guys that's the end of my story time i hope it wasn't too long <laughs> I just wanted to share with you guys because if I don't share with you, we will not share. What's not the essence of sharing my experiences with you as an international student in the UK, okay? So, yes, guys, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you, I don't know if you say if you enjoyed it, but <laughs> it's just one of those things. But yeah, I hope you learned a thing or two. I don't know if enjoyment is the word, but yeah, I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, please drop whatever you have to say in the comment section. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!